that uh, new book coming out on hypertrophy and I, I'm doing uh, some experiments with Mike Brown to see if we can make some things better. Um, you know, I'm uh, doing a lot of presses this week. Uh, uh, had that wedding, uh, in California and that was great. Bobby, Bobby's wedding was wonderful. Welcome Cecilia to the family. Congratulations. Yeah. Awesome. And then, uh, so, so training was a little weird, but, uh, uh, you know, last week, but yeah, so today, uh, you know, just after this, I'm going to put on my, my big hand weights, ankle weights and, you know, my ruck and go rucking and tomorrow will be, a, you know, some, uh, Mr. Universe work. Uh, yeah. Things are good. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to go too heavy right now. I have some weightlifting meets coming up. So for me, I find, uh, it's kind of better to have this like bodybuilding section before going back to Olympic lifting, just to make sure that, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm always amazed when, and this is, and maybe some of our listeners might experience too, is there's this idea that you, there's this one workout and you're going to do that workout, you know, you're going to figure it out and you're going to do that one workout until the day you die. And it's, there's, and it's just not true. I mean, I, I've usually, I think about six weeks, uh, is about the tipping point for a training program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly you can probably go longer than that. If, you know, eight weeks, 12 weeks, if you have something specific coming up or you're in the middle of something, but you, you need to have, you, you need to move around a little bit, change things up. Uh, yeah. You, you kind of just have to. And, you know, like, for example, you know, when I first met you, you know, the kettlebells were complexes and then kettlebells became just strength moves. And then kettlebells became this, you know, and it, even even the industry, uh, the, the a tool will change over time. Yeah, uh, isn't that fascinating? I want to talk about that for a second because it's it's true, and I've always appreciated your perspective on it, Dan, because it seemed informed and balanced. You know, um, the kettlebell is a good tool for a lot of things. It's a great tool for a few things, and it's a terrible tool for a few things, right? And that's just the end of it. I mean, like, what could be more obvious to me? It's it's killer yeah. app would be the sort of the complexy stuff it's good for strength and you can certainly use it to build muscle yeah. but is it ever going to replace the barbell for things like deadlift of course not of course yeah. not but just and but people seem to miss this point just because something isn't the best tool for the job doesn't mean it can't be a decent tool for it right yeah, I, um you know so you got to kind of just weigh this stuff up and say okay you know what do i want out of a training program what are my goals what are the best tools Maybe I don't have access to the best tool. Maybe I don't want to join a gym. Are there other good tools that I could use? And how should I use them? Um, but I don't know, Dan. Maybe that's just maybe oh, that maybe that th thinking is just a little too. It, my subtle. favorite thing now that my YouTube account is is kind of really growing is I can I can delete comments and remove things. And uh, one of the things this week uh, someone wrote along the lines is kettlebells are stupid for building strength. That was that was the whole. I got the kettlebells are are bad for building muscle this week uh, oh, by oh. somebody. Yeah, well, those car cartoon avatars. Oh, so always. now it's so bad. So we've brought moral theology into strength training. I love that. Uh, uh, so uh, yes, now that Easter is behind us, happy Easter. Happy uh, Easter. We can now focus back on. Uh, I think anybody, and and I mean this. Uh, who uses the kettlebell for, uh, you know, for double kettlebell front squats uh, should be burning at the stake. There's no well, disagreement here, Dan. I'm glad we finally get our little commission, right? Yeah. And the nice thing about being is, is that by being held to the stake, you keep a much more upright position. Yeah, help with your posture and technique. There's a lot of and benefits. You have to a that. fire uh, at where you when you hit that bottom, hit the bottom of the squat, you'll pop right yeah. out. At least for a few reps, yeah. So. I, what I, what I what annoys me about this again is this sort of I don't know. Aside from the entire kindergartenish mentality mm -hmm. and an obviously incorrect statement, is just the lack of the ability to conceive of whether there is some sort of middle position, right? Okay, well, I'm I'm happy to concede as I have always been able to concede that the kettlebell is not the best the best tool for every single job, but if you understand the basic yeah. principles and fundamentals of strength training and hypertrophy training of how to you know configure your variables of intensity and density and volume you can then ask the question can i put these into place with kettlebells and the answer is obviously yes obviously yes it might not be the most optimal which i've said a million times 
But it doesn't, again, just because something isn't the best doesn't mean that it's bad. So it's just this like low, it's it's low IQ and it's low brow, right? These types of yeah. <laughs> comments. I don't know how else to describe it. And I, I could call something low brow because I'm low brow in a lot of ways. So, you know, it takes one to know one. Uh, but it's just, it's just, it's just deeply unhelpful, this, these sorts of things. Um, and it, it's unfortunate because it, it steers people in the wrong direction. I feel like we constantly have to, to correct for the same, I guess this is just our life, Dan. I guess this is just what we signed up for, isn't it? Right. This yeah. is like the constant repeated correction of the same silly, dumb things over and over. But you know what? I know what's helping some people, a lot of people. So, so well, we persist. I mean, let's, I mean, we've, we've both been eyewitnesses of people losing friendships over some uh, of the smallest things in the weight room. I, I, wild, isn't it? Yeah. Or, you know, you'll, and, and I get it. And it does drive traffic to your site. But I always have to ask the question, just because you're driving traffic, are you really driving, you know, income, you know? Uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. Friends yeah, are. I mean, that makes so many Instagram influence case in point, you know, enormous traffic, but like zero retention, yeah. let alone any customers from this thing. So, so you know, I have, uh, you know, with my Instagram account, I'm in the mid 50,000s of followers. Okay, I have a point, folks. So uh, I go to the ice house and uh, Becky, who works at the ice house, has a cat who has these freakish wolf like ears. Ooh. And she has almost 100,000 followers. Her cat has 100,000 followers. Yeah, right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, you know, gentle listener, this is the reality of. <laughs> <laughs> and is, how many yachts does she have, Dan, from this? Uh, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't know. She she maximizes her income from it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Even if you were to optimize all the opportunities around Wolf Cat, yeah. uh, I I doubt you're pull, you're getting even a single yacht from that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I got Ozzy working all this on the on making my uh, you know my video. Big Oz. And he does a great job. And then you just sit back and you look at a cat with strange ears has double the number of or, followers and it just, yeah, or yeah. fat or a fat bunny eating raspberries. What if I sat here and I just eat raspberries oh, just if, like this, if, Dan, you think that would get a lot of views? Get, if you can get a porcupine eating uh, an apple, you'll, <laughs> you'll blow up the internet, but that's and just, and it's so, and I don't know why people come in because in one of the things and I, and I do warn you all, I mean, anonymous has a high price. The, the anonymity of the internet, has with it a very high price because I remember when the internet first came out, all these really good coaches had a site. It was called old school strength and the Cincinnati Bengal coach would come in and talk. Uh, all, I mean, it was, it was so big before it was way, not way before dragon door, but it was, it was big. And then these uh, kind of 14 year old boys came in and destroyed the site. Yeah, well, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Canadians who spelt their name with a K. Why would ever happen to those Comedians is my my daughter Marin too perfect. She 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 wanted Canadian bacon this morning, so we oh. made some Canadian bacon. That's what yeah. we did. So, so you're enough, you're Canadians now. Enough of us ranting. All right, let's do questions. All right, truth behind all this. All right, you know, Rickard has a question that we've gotten fairly often, but you know what? That's okay. That's okay. We'll take this one again. He's got bad elbow, Dan. We've dealt with bad elbow before. He worked a bit too hard on pull ups. And I have heard you talk about this problem before. Okay, good, good. Uh, best thing is to avoid it, but what to do when you got it? Well, avoid the, I'm going to give my, my three-point summary of somebody who's had bad elbow, medial, medial elbow. Um, you got to lay off pull-ups for a long time. You got to lay off anything that hurts for a long time and even longer than you think you need. That's rule number one. Yeah. Rule, num rule number two is you got to do a lot of stretching and massage work. And just remember, because your elbow hurts, doesn't mean that your elbow is the problem. You got to get all that muscle belly on your forearm, get the bicep, get the shoulders. You got to just work everything because everything's connected and everything mm -hmm. matters. Do all of your important uh, wrist and forearm and shoulder and bicep stretches. You got to prioritize that, mobilize every day. And the third thing that I think is important, which is a little bit harder to pin down, but we've talked about this before, Dan. Because everything is important, everything matters. You gotta, you gotta clean up your environment, your stress, and your nutrition. We okay. talked about before, like when I, when I eat, when I'm, when I'm a little naughty, which you can be around Easter, and the inflammation comes on. The first thing that hurts are all the old injuries, right? It's the elbows, the hamstrings. It's like my body remembers where, where I hurt before when, uh, 
when the environment is too stressful or I'm just just not uh, having things dialed in. So I have found that the general healing process, you know, how you're sleeping and what you're eating plays a big factor as well. So those would be my three pieces of advice. And I'm just cheering along with you because I, I and it was interesting what you said. And I think it's an important point. For the, I'm going to emphasize this one thing. Anytime you have an injury, as best you can, if you can go upstream and downstream to help it. So an elbow injury is also a wrist and shoulder injury. A shoulder injury is an arm and torso injury. Uh, if, if Do your best to work on both sides of an injury. Uh, and I think sometimes that's where the injury, that was the start of it. Uh, you know, a, a weird, a weirdly held wrist or something like that. And it just channels its way down. That's that's why I'm a big fan of having multiple grips on the pull-up. And I don't, it it certainly does nothing to prevent MAPS, middle age pull-up syndrome. But what it does is at least gives you a chance to, you know, to push it back. Uh, okay. if, yeah, no, I'm I'm a big fan of, of mixing the, the grips up and the, the angles and, and all that. So, you know, hey, life comes at you with weird angles and grips sometimes. So it's might not be bad to, to yeah. practice some of that. Right. Uh, and, you know, that, that actually a little bit on like technique, you know, people harp about proper technique a lot. Um, but I think the more thing to kind of like be concerned about is consistency of what you practice, right? Oh. That's that's where injuries really seem to happen. And there's finally I, the science is starting to catch up with this, and it makes sense, right? Even if your squat technique isn't, um, you know, ideal, you know, according to how the latest, you know, most recently certified NASM trainer would have have you do it. If you've been training in a certain way up to a certain load, and then you suddenly deviate that technique under a very significant load, that's when you're going to get hurt because that that pattern isn't trained that pattern isn't trained so it's not just getting you know proper joint centration and structural support those things i think they're still quite important and there's a reason that we like exercise performed a certain way but it's consistency of technique and especially when you're under significant amounts of stress to not deviate from what the patterns are actually strong in because that's then you go into a weak pattern and you break and yeah. But but life throws a lot of different patterns at you. That's the point, right? So it doesn't hurt to be strong in many different positions and patterns. So that way you're not like super strong in this one position and then you got to do monkey bars and then suddenly you have <laughs> a messed up elbow, right? <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and you, uh, can I just add one last point? Most of my career as an athlete and a strength coach, I ignored pull-ups, chin-ups in the family of them because there was a tool in the weight room called the lat pull-down. And... Um, and if I needed to do that, I would just do that. And I had, and even then that was only a few times. Then I let people convince me that the pull-up had value. Now I'm on the other side, back to how I originally started. And I just, I, Pat, I just can't. What's the phrase the kids use? I just can't even or something like that. I just can't literally even. I, I just can't literally even. I'm just so tired of pull-up questions. I Dan, your program says to do 10 pull-ups. I can't do any. What should I do? And then I have to come up with this. Pull pull -ups. I can't do five pull-ups. What should I do? Five. If, and now I'm just at the point like, I don't, I wish I would have never, ever suggested pull-ups to anybody because it is fraught with follow-up questions. Yes, I know. And, yeah. I, and, the, and, and this is going to sound kind of odd, but uh, to quote Murtaugh, I'm just too old for this stuff. Just I too just, old for it. I you just know. can't keep answering pull-up questions because uh, I do think there's they're a valuable exercise. But That's right. There's other things to tend to. There's other things, yeah. We have reruns of Love Boat to watch. <laughs> well, I was thinking deadlifts, but okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, GM says, good morning. I've seen Dan and Brett Contreras. Say the hip thrust is best as a high rep exercise. I was hoping you could explain why as well. Why does Dan prefer the bands for this overweight? Uh, I guess or, or people use barbell or doesn't doesn't Brett have like his own special contraption for this? Oh thing? yeah, he's got. And in fact, he just came out with a new variation of the. It's basically the Bulgarian goat goat bag swing, but on your knees with the weight kind of a cool weight vest. I was like, dang, that's that's. A, it, and I, I tried a very. I, I tried it with. Not as much weight as he had, but with just a weight vest. And it's like, okay, that's a winner. Uh, well, let's go back through all the question here. Why high rep? Uh, same reason I think high rep swings are better. Uh, when you're working with the hinge, 
easy. You got a huge, huge, huge loads, big deadlift, big clean, big Olympic snatch, or high reps. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a, like a middle area with the hinge movement. Like you, you, you know, your 300 swing thing, you know, 300 swings. Yeah, that's a lot of swings, right, Pat? I mean, you know, maybe that's I'm, a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. that seems like a lot. Uh, whereas if you were going to do max deadlifts, you'd probably have four lifts in you, three lifts in you at the most. So anytime you work with the hinge movement, you, you have to take a road down either heavyweights or high reps. Uh, uh, I think of, I thought I've explained this every time I've ever answered this question, but, uh, and then the reason I like bands, uh, better than weights is because, uh, I was celibate for a whole long time in my life and I just don't. I just don't want to go forced to go back into that. <laughs> uh, no, I just, I just like, I just, I like how bands, as you, you get into that top position, uh, pull you back down. Uh, I like to pause at the top of my hip thrusts. I don't know. I don't know if I always show it that well in the videos because in the videos you're, you know, you're, you're doing multiple takes and you're trying to make things look blue. And, Oh, it's of course, yeah, you gotta you know, your make makeup's done right and the lighting and all that. Well, my makeup issues are still, I'm still working on that. Yeah. Mm, that's, good, mm -hmm. and never read too much into my. I mean, you know, I do think you know I, I'm coming up with a program as a bonus because uh, no matter what, again, no matter what I say, people find you know uh, I'm trying to do an easy strength program uh, with. Uh, just press and hip thrust as the foundation. And the thing is, it breaks it breaks all the rules. Uh, hip thrusts break the rules of easy strength. But it's such a good exercise, I'm, I'm willing to look into it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be like pull-ups. Very soon I'll be up here saying, damn it, why did I ever recommend hip thrusts? It's so obvious to me why they're good. Why? Did, but, you know. Yep, yep. All right. Well, we will hopefully live to regret the day. So, good question. Rue the day. Rue, I say. Rue, yes. All right. Uh, Sean says, hey, Pat and Dan, or Dan and Pat, sorry. What are your thoughts on an, quote, unload program incorporating hill sprints, carries, monkey bars, and push-ups? I'm hoping this will heal the nagging injuries while getting me into good shape. So, I guess he just means just leaving the weights alone for a while, Dan. What do you think about this? Well, I mean, I mean, looking here, uh, the, my only issue would be uh, monkey bars and push-ups. Uh, if you're trying, if you, if you've got joint issues, uh, push-ups can, if you've got shoulder issues, push-ups can really be an issue. Uh, so I don't know what the problem is. But yeah, yeah. Even though, but yeah, that's an important point. Even though push-ups aren't, you know, externally loaded, I will tell you when I had bad elbow tendonitis, just putting my wrists and hands in that position was, it was, it was a no-go. Push-ups were a no-go for me. Yeah. So but anytime I see hill sprints and carries, I mean, I think that's a great program. If you're to do hill sprints, carries, and well, and if monkey bars don't bother you, I mean, that's uh, what was the yeah, simple rule if it hurt, if it don't, if it if it don't hurt, all right, but if it do hurt, don't do it. Yeah, we used to do this one thing with my javelin thrower set. I you do need a piece of equipment, that's why I don't do it now. But uh, gobble squats followed by monk a monkey bar, you know, run, whatever you call that, you know, monkey, and followed by a sprint, uh, gobble squat, monkey bar, sprint. And I thought that was just a great, a great uh, tool, but uh. You know, as always, you know, your mileage may vary. Yeah. yeah I, 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 anytime I see hill sprints, oh, obviously I'm going to agree with it, okay? Yeah, yeah. And, of course, you're going to probably not disagree with the loaded carry idea either. Being its inventor. All right. Let's uh, go to our friend, Kirill. Well, first we'll say hello to Stephen, who says good morning. Well, good morning to you, Stephen. Hello, Stephen. Fine day. What is everyone drinking, by the way? What do you have in your cup? Dan? I have uh, Jack Daniels tequila vodka mezcal. Yeah, good old granddad for me today. Yeah, and some and and some herbs I picked up on a corner. I don't. I don't no, it's just it's good old fashioned black uh, coffee. Though I, this could be the kilos and caffeine brand this morning. Usually, I drink my Hawaiian coffee. Hmm. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know which one went in the. Sometimes when you make the coffee, you don't know where it comes from. Yeah, it just goes into that ambiguous container. We, we've got the ambiguous container. Like, what brand is this? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, Kirill says, hey, what is the value in, if any, in heavy deadlifts? I can go heavy three by three once a week. Heavy for me is around 150 kilogram. Dan, is there value in heavy deadlift training? If so, 
Is there value in doing it once a week, three by three? Well, I never had the deadlift, so you know, I just, I just, I, I never. I mean, I did do snatch grip deadlifts, uh, but actually, the carryover was zero. It's funny; it didn't help my snatch at all, but it helped me. Uh, you know, I tell you, snatch grip deadlifts weirdly a good bodybuilding exercise, and I couldn't. I can't explain to you why that's true, but it, it's uh, maybe it's that grip way out there. I don't know. But uh, what are the value in heavy deadlifts? Well, if you're a power lifter, that's how you're going to win the meet. Uh, value in heavy deadlifts, yeah, it's a good way to demonstrate what your strength levels are. It's a good, it's a good feedback tool um, uh, for uh, for your training. Um, if if you do them once a week, I'm sure that's fine. Uh, it's 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 not a this. I mean, uh, again, what's the value? It it, it again. I, see, I feel like we're moving over to that morality question here there's great i mean if if it's something you need to do or if you want to see where you are it's a great tool but uh there's i mean there's obviously other options oh one thing i do want to tell you i don't want to tell you the author's name but a very famous author is coming to train with me this week oh yeah so i'll if, if it's okay i'll clear it and we'll talk next week okay yeah that's very Let's say the it's someone who's uh written a book i have quoted many times oh okay well i'm very curious to to hear that so stay tuned ladies and gentlemen for the big reveal dan john trains another celebrity right well you know you know that's like the thing right now dan have you seen this like the i guess if you want your youtube channel to blow up which means maybe you should start yours is already blowing up dan so you probably don't need to do this maybe i should everyone's critiquing the celebrity workouts now like every other fitness video i see online is like exercise scientists critiques uh who, I don't know, Ryan Gosling, is that a guy in Hollywood uh, program or Thor, whoever the guy plays plays Thor right now. So apparently that's the thing is to critique celebrity celebrity workouts, which is like, let's talk about low-hanging fruit, right? <laughs> well, first off, I don't think people realize uh, uh, you. Okay, there's, there's the imp, there is so much selection in Hollywood and Broadway that when you get to the person who's going to be the star, they are so, it, you know, it, it is, it's very much like drafting in the NBA. Uh, how many Americans, you know, play basketball? I mean, honestly, how many Americans, you know, I mean, I mean, there's growing up, I mean, growing up next to South city high, we had 30 courts and every night when English as a second language is being taught, the guys would be out there playing basketball. I mean, there'd be these games going on constantly. Some people would miss class to finish up the basketball games. Well, how many of those guys made it the NBA? None, ever, none. How many people do you know ever played in the NBA? Uh, I mean, no, no, not coached or ended up at a workshop with. Well, I've never, I mean, I've never taken someone from grassroots to NBA, uh, but I worked, I mean, <clears throat> to be in the NBA, you got to be freakishly tall. You got to have hands the size of frying pans. I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, you just, well, it's the same in Hollywood. So when you look at the guy who plays Thor, you know, he didn't just walk in. I mean, he probably had, I mean, how many people would want to play Thor in a Marvel movie? Uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of people. Well, so you self, you know, you just, they just had, they had, they had a thousand names and they went like this until they got to this guy and this guy has some DNA that those other 999 might not have had from there. We then, you know, spend a lot of money supporting this person to get in shape for that one scene where he takes his shirt off. And I think that's the thing, you know, I can't remember which Ryan it was, but in green lantern, I mean, uh, there's a scene in green lantern when he gets his new body. And I mean, he is sliced and diced. <laughs> You know, um, but you really, without that, without that selection, you can't even look at the program first. You can't even look at the training. It's like if you're watching, some, there's a there's a kid who plays for Purdue who's like what seven four or something like that. Well, if we were to critique, critique his training program and ignore the seven four thing, uh, we would really be missing the big point. Yeah, and they're on drugs. <laughs> so, I, uh, 
and man, they just the so they just they're so comfortable lying about it too. So many of them, which is I know we've had that conversation yeah. a lot of times. Yeah, but dang it, but dang it, they just they really just are, you know, make <laughs> like comfortable with like making it seem like it's just their genetics and that circuit training they've been doing. Well, that uh, <laughs> so I've sat next to two very famous people on flights. Uh, so Liam Neeson was uh, two rows up on a flight to Heathrow. And then uh, I sat next to Heather Graham on a flight from New York to Salt Lake City. And, uh, you know, the Heather Graham of, of Austin Powers doesn't look like the Heather Graham. I was trying to remember what, what movie she was in. That's right. Austin Powers. She's in Powers too. Um, but, you know, but when you see someone who's a movie star in real life, and, you know, you have five hours to sit next to him. And, I, you know, I would obviously stand up every time she had to, to, to get out of her seat, to get out of her bag, whatever. Um, and you just get a sense that uh, their Hollywood celebrities are just they're the, the biggest thing that stands out to me is how small they are, mm. how extremely small they are. Uh, everyone makes fun of Sylvester Stallone for being so short and uh, Tom. Tom Cruise being Tom Cruise short. But uh, it is it is part of the nature of the industry that you you need that because it you know um, there's a there's an actor by the name of Steve Marchant uh, he works with uh, I think he was one of the original authors of the the Office the BBC version and in real life I guess he's like two meters tall six seven and you know when he is in a show it part of what's funny is how tall he is you know but whether he's six seven or not you wouldn't know because actors tend to be so relatively short. right so I, I do like this so when you're ripping on a celebrity work workout it is like watching an nba player rip on an nba player strength training it always looks goofy because they don't fit in machines they don't fit in exercise uh, exercises. you mm -hmm. know they don't fit uh they're just really really big yeah so you, you got to be careful and you know i know that when uh, lebron james came out with it, sponsoring some equipment a lot of fitness enthusiasts got really attacked him it's like get, listen god bless him for lifting weights it was good it was good for me that lebron lifted weights because i can now say uh, you know lebron he lifts weights yeah now maybe we should do an analysis and look at like how did steve martin get his physique for the movie the jerk or something like that Oh my God, that'd be awesome! <laughs> How did Frank Sinatra. We'll just, we'll just speculate. Yeah, we'll just speculate. He smokes seven <laughs> a day. Went through two bottles of Jack Daniels. Then he ate dinner and had some fun. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, perfect. All right, uh, put it in the queue, gentle yeah. listeners. Dan and I will get right on that. If right you now. read the original James Bond, you know he's uh, in Casino Royale. He's just been shot. In the that's the first one, and. Yeah. Uh, He's decided to get in shape. He swims. He runs for a mile every day. He swims and he cuts back on his cigarettes. That's how he gets himself in the best shape of his life. I love it. Yeah, yeah. love it. Love yeah. it. Love it. Steven says, Dan, I've heard you say that supersetting kettlebell swings and hip thrusts might be a good idea. Uh, for the hip thrust, would it be better to do a body weight or Rube Goldberg machine? Well, I, I have uh, I have the Sorenex hip thrust machine and I have the... Um, I have Brett's uh, hip thrust light, L-I-T-E. By the way, and I wish more people would consider it. Uh, there are some knockoffs of it now. They're very reasonably priced. But the hip thrust light, uh, will it is one of those things that it will fit under your bed. I mean, it's I, I like it. So you don't have to you don't have to go too crazy on what you do. Uh, on road trips, I do my hip thrusts on a couch, on a hotel yeah. couch. Uh, you know, I just have my, my back on the, you know, on the seat and, um, uh, and then I just have my bands and I, and I do that. You don't have to go too crazy. Uh, who's, def okay. I'm sorry. I just got to defend Dr. Mike. I don't know what that's so talking like. about the celeb videos. Dr. Uh, Mike Isretel produces a number of these. You don't have to defend Dr. Mike. I'm sure oh. his videos on this are, are. Oh, sorry, guys. Are just, are just are just fine. I'm sure a lot of the videos in this are just fine, and they're probably providing a decent public service because, well, look, it is like people who 
don't know better generally want to know what Hugh Jackman did to become Wolverine. And, you know, if they if they just follow the article in Men's Health, they're probably going to be massively misled. So I'm not. Yeah. So I, I'm quoted in that one. Uh, I, I, <laughs> no way. right? And I don't. Hugh Jackman. He seems like a fine man, you know, but he's never uh, you know, I've never seen I've never seen him throw the discus or hammer. I've never, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, we're, we're kind of running away from the point, but uh, if you want to become famous, you you like uh, you know uh, Lebestark uh, does a great job with it. Uh, of he he ha- he is a master of titles. Uh, it'll be something like "Did Pavel misspeak on Joe Rogan's podcast?" Pow, Ten million views. <laughs> uh, you know why did Steve Maxwell? You know, attack Pavel. Wow, thousand billion. Yeah, I mean, Steve Mack was so mean to Dan John. What's the beef? Yeah, why? Why? Yeah, why? Because I'm because I'm Let's a take a gossipy coffee group. So. I'm a titanium filled person, and I'm a failure as a father and grandfather. <laughs> oh man. No. Again, yeah, the, 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 I just I get it. I mean, that's sort of the name of the YouTube game right now, right? But it's just. Uh, not necessarily a fan of that style of things, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and just remember, gentle listener, celebrities and professional athletes are just different. Uh, and I'll tell you one thing that really makes them different is they tend to have a lot of resources. Oh, yes. Yes, they do. I, I, even, even the lowest paid professional athlete has so many resources that, you know, I, I'll get questions on my podcast about like this god bless this guy uh pat but we've you both of us have been there where he's had to take a job where he's working long hours every day crappy commute uh he's also taking a night class but he wants to keep training with kids but he wants to keep his relationships and it's like so you're gonna work eight hours a day with a one hour commute on both ends 10 hours you're taking a night class and you're trying to live optimally and my first thought is God bless you for mm. trying uh, for even for even for for just the the very the, thought just the very thought that you're going to do that and one of the things that I think really made my career is that when I was going through that I kept trying to outthink the daycare problem the barfing baby problem the you know I I, I kept trying to use my brain. So that's when I came up with shopping lists and menus and uh, easy strength concepts, loaded carry concepts. That's when I realized that drills are more important. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the time, 20 minutes of drills is better than you know 20 minutes of discus throwing where you only get in six to 10 throws. So yeah, so in the, in the struggles that a lot of our listeners are having is the answer to... A, and once things clear up in your life, you have the habit of good nutrition. Yeah. You have the habit of good sleep hygiene. You have the habit of training. And when things clear up, you know, I, I've said this many times in this podcast. Lost, my best right. year as an athlete was age 47. And mm. people, what was the secret? And I said, Kelly was in the sixth grade and Lindsay was in the fourth grade. And I could leave them and go throw again. <laughs> yeah, about that amazing, I, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I had an hour to train versus 12 minutes. Yeah, but you had optimized things, right? So there's value in being in those high pressure situations, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Adapt or die, as they say. And that's all I think yeah. that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then once you, you have something that's pressure tested and, you know, the pressure is alleviated, man. Yeah, a lot of, uh, be a lot of force behind that for sure. Yeah. All right, Mark has a good question. It's interesting. Would you start a career as a strength coach today, knowing what you know about internet experts and trolls? So let me let me say this. Um, Dan and I have both been doing this for a long time. Dan's been doing it for a lot longer than I have, obviously. But I'm no, you know, I'm no spring chicken, especially online. You can look at how long I've been around. It's it's been a minute. And I have to say at least this the internet troll thing, Dan, I think, and it, it's platform versus platform, but I swear, man, it was it was worse 10 years ago than it is now. It really was, especially. When you, and I think it's an algorithm thing. I think like 10 years ago, like YouTube didn't care who saw your videos. Now it kind of like figures out to curate your stuff to people who will inherently who are looking for that sort of content. and will be inherently more amenable. So the troll still exists. I just think that the a lot of the platforms have gotten certainly not perfect, 
but a little bit because I look at videos from like 10 years ago. I have some some ones that got hundreds of thousands of views and like, damn, those comment sections are a mess. Right. Uh, but the good thing about that is, you know, uh, you learn through experience. And like when you've been in been in this world for a while, I don't know, you just I just don't really care that much. Like it doesn't it doesn't really just it's just sort of a cost of doing business at this point that. Yeah, uh, like anything else, you sort of just get used to it. It gets, but it doesn't mean that, like, you know, the occasional idiot can't really agitate you. Certainly, <laughs> certainly still can. Um, but I don't know. I don't think, at least from my perspective of, of how often I have to deal with that now versus, you know, say, 10 years ago, I don't think it's worse. I think it's actually in some ways better. But again, it's platform dependent. And, and in some ways, I'm not even on as many platforms as I used to be. Like, for example, yeah. it seems it seems like maybe there's more annoyance on instagram than youtube for example i don't know because I, I hardly ever post on instagram these days you'll have to tell me dan because you you're kind of you know i i don't know yeah even the i sent you a dm and it's some uh, advertiser i i don't even get those and of course you know you know the whole it's all dying it the, social media is going to, uh now i gotta be careful it, it's not what i mean it's it, it is in real time adapting. Uh, I don't know if you saw that Trump's social media, uh, he lost a billion dollars in just a few days. Now, 20 years ago, if you would have come out with a new thing, uh, I'm thinking of the late 90s, uh, the early aughts, you would, it, people would come out with a product that wasn't even there yet and they would make millions selling the product. That oh, yeah, huge, yeah, yes. huge, huge bubbles. Yeah, uh, a lot of know, those. X, X is dying as we look at it. TikTok is being banned. For, and I think, for, I mean, I, I, of course, Congress has only passed 27 bills in two years, so I'm not sure they do anything. But the idea that TikTok, I guess, has an issue. I, I Not on TikTok. I've, all I hear is what I hear about it. Yeah, all I hear is what I hear. Uh, I've, I've always liked YouTube. They're much better about, um, when I remember when I first went on YouTube, they had all my videos for free on there. And I try, I, it's funny because YouTube is based in San Bruno, California, which is right next to my hometown. And uh, they would not, you got to, I had to prove to them that it was my content. <laughs> yeah. I had to prove to them that it was my contact and they're much better about it now. Um, and I don't, it, actually, I should have lawsuited those guys. Made up yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so YouTube is far better now. Uh, I think that's I think that's right. Like I I only have been paying attention to YouTube lately because I launched that that new channel, Cut About Quickies. Thanks for the oh. mention, mention, Dan. Yeah, I've been been trying to look. Okay, well, what the what does the YouTube stuff? Not that people care about this, but you're getting it anyways. What does it What does it care about right now? And my understanding is before it just cared about how many views was your video. I mean, so, so it didn't it didn't matter, and you would have tons and tons of trolls because it would just go in front of people that it just wasn't relevant for yeah. and this or that. But now it cares about viewer retention how many people are actually watching and consuming your whole video which makes sense if it's going to skew towards that it's going to skew towards people who actually want to watch your content and are probably going to enjoy it more so it's not to say that the trolls or the idiots have gone away i just think that the algorithms have gotten better and more relevant for shifting material in front of the right people so you don't have to you're you're more likely for your stuff to go in front of people that it will actually be enjoyed by and serve, which is a good thing. Who doesn't, who doesn't want that? So I'm actually not like a super negative Nancy about this, this stuff yeah. these days. I think, that, I think that is a, a better direction. Yeah. yeah. And don't forget for 21, 22 years of my career, there was no internet. And if someone would have come up and said something, if someone had walked up, you know, when Tiff died, I got a troll who wrote something like, we all deserve the truth about how you killed your wife. That was the phrase. Oh, on, my gosh. That was, that was a comment on uh, on my uh, YouTube account. Could you imagine this same person walking up to me in real life and saying that? It would never happen. It would never happen. No no offense to, to some of you, but I, I like the fact that age 67 that I can still beat the crap out of most of you. And I don't mean to be rude or anything, but you know, if I get angry, and Kelly and Lindsay will tell you the one time they saw me angry, 
you know, kind of like a, a certain green skinned friend of mine, you don't want to see me angry. <laughs> but no one would ever walk up to me in real life and do that. No one. Of course not. Behind because, the safety of the keyboard and a cartoon uh, avatar picture, right? Yeah. The Murray cop, when the Murray police would show up and I would explain what they said, the Murray cop would probably get out his baton and give a few whacks. Who would he have, right? The police over. department here, you know, they, they you know. Um, mm -hmm. But online you know that little zit face nerd who never did anything and no and god loves zit face nerds he really truly does but uh yeah so so for me i was fortunate because I, I could spend so much of my life and you know and i gotta tell you i like your question those are strength and health magazines i found out later on that so much of what was written in strength and health was not true you know they or, and then when they did move to the truth in the late 60s, uh, Bill Starr's famous articles that if you're not taking amphetamines and anabolics, you're just not going to be able to keep up. Yeah. Uh, he yeah, writes me... that and everyone goes, oh, and this is what happened to all the readership. Yeah, but, you know, let me let me answer this question again. Sorry to spend so much time on it. This is a good question. Good but question. To, to answer more directly, you know, would you start a career now knowing what you know about oh. the internet trolls? The answer is... Yeah, of course. Like you do what you do because you love it and you believe you can you can help people. Not everybody. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, I hope that's the case for whatever you want to do. And no matter what you want to do, say I wanted to teach guitar online. It, it would be the same issue, right? It would be, be the same issue, right? I, if you want to do anything online where you think you can help people and, and uh, you know, offer some guidance or expertise and you put it even if you put in the time, which you should to actually be able to offer good, you're all you're there's no way you can escape this, right? I mean, well, you know, I'm just thinking. The other, I, I have this friend. Uh, he's he's a different kind of guy. What he doesn't post on Facebook anymore, but he would often post these these non true articles with always the same line underneath. Wake up, people! And it was and there were these invented internet articles. So I mean, I no matter what you get into, the the trollish behavior gets at you. Right. Yeah, it's a cost. If you're doing anything online, it's just a cost of doing business. So you either have to just realize, hey, I'm going to have to deal with this, and there's better and worse ways of dealing with it, or I'm just this just isn't the game for me, which so, is fine. Yeah, but I'm you know, you I'm gotta make that call on uh, Netflix right now. Just I'm I'm just uh, somebody told me to watch it because it was, uh, and if I can remember the name, three. It's about three planets in a line. Three. Uh, I, I can't remember the name of it. And I'm watching it. And I don't necessarily like it, but I've already gone online and real and been told that I should hate this show. So it's it's interesting. Even if you're a movie star or a Broadway, before you even before a movie even comes out, you will find out reasons to hate the show. Um, I I went to go see Death on the Nile, and somebody uh, somebody said I shouldn't see the show because one of the actors is a jerk. And I thought to myself, Oh my God, an actor is a jerk. Can you imagine? Not it's going the to the three body problem. People are commenting. Is that oh, the? Is that's that's that it? Problem. Thanks. I, had, I saw somebody on Facebook actually just recommend that the other day. So oh, yeah. it, it's it's a fine joke. I, I have no issue with it. But if could you imagine if you didn't get into movie? I'm not going to go to a movie unless there's only kind people in it. <laughs> in real life, there'd be no. Movie. You right. better make like a pretty early on like commitment to be able to distinguish the art from the artist or else you're gonna you're gonna have a very s slim pickings of stuff to enjoy uh yeah, I no i know could you just and that would be all your that the only way you're gonna do things in life is to find started I, what did i start i don't watch a lot of series but i did start the i'm, I'm always late to the game the, the jack reacher ones oh yeah yeah and they're fun they're fun it's not like crazy groundbreaking but it's like you know yeah i didn't read i haven't read the book so like i don't I don't know. I did see the Tom Cruise ones and nobody liked those except me, which tends to go for a lot of Tom Cruise movies. But anyway, they're fun. I'm enjoying it. Uh, all right, let's let's move on. We'll move on to some other questions here. Sure. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, Dan's idea of alternating high rep pressing and the ABC armor building complex is the win of the century from Gorg, from our buddy Gorg here. 
You know, remember when we used to think Gorg had, great day. <laughs> we used to think Gorg had issues. Now he comes in and says something brilliant like that. <laughs> no, you've been elevated, Gorg. Oh, Gorg, we used to think this, and now we think this. Okay, so congrats to Gorg. That's awesome. Yeah, Gorg. And, and it, it's a it's a simple, simple idea. If you have kettlebells or dumbbells and you decide, Gorg. if you decide to do high rep pressing one day in the ABC and alternate those two, good things happen at a low uh, a low cost in time and it's it seemingly fairly high benefit. So, yeah, thank you, Gorg. Yeah, awesome. Hey, sorry, I missed a few questions. It's hard right. to keep up. But Jimmy Jam, our fun name, says, how, do you, how would you program hill sprints with the armor building complex? Is this something well, you would... Yeah, you certainly, certainly, of course, yeah. Uh, I would suggest if you're going to do the ABC once a week, I, you know, if you're going to do it once a week, I would, I would put hill sprints on another day. But if you're going to do uh, uh, twice a week, I would do the same day. That would be the only. That would be the only. The hill, like, do the ABC and then run hills. If you if you're going to do it once a week, separate the two workouts. But if you're going to do it, ABC hill, ABC hill. You could probably do that. Uh, the the only problem with hill sprints is the, the old thing is what do you mean by that? Uh, interesting. I, I bumped into a guy the other day who was eight years older than me, but we both had the same junior college uh, coach, uh, Bob Lahati, the late great Bob Lahati, and we we're both talking about these damn hill sprints he would make you do all the time. So there's hill sprints, and then there's Skyline College hill sprints. So. Skyline College hill sprints, maybe once every three weeks. Hill sprints that I see people do once or twice a week. Yeah. yeah. Uh, here's a question, Dan. I'm curious how you answer this one. Jason says, kind of a strange question, but I was watching some old sports doc and saw the theory that making love before a match or tournament has negative consequences performance. What is the old, what is the old newlywed game? Making whoopee. That's the that's that's the appropriate and or the advice from Rocky that women we can legs, a, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm in weights and lights. Uh, there's a actually, I think it was Casey Stengel, the great baseball coach, who said <laughs> it's not sex before competition that hurts you, it's chasing sex. <laughs> the pursuit is, right. And, hey, uh, that, that uh, sounds highly plausible, right? Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, in in the in the sports I compete in, it probably wouldn't be. Because uh, the 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 physical arousal levels, uh, the the emotional arousal levels of throwing and, and the physical tension levels of throwing are lower. But I, I, I mean, I could some uh, an experienced coach could sit down, cross his arms, and say, "Danny, you know, it really does hurt." And I, and I would listen. I would lean in and listen. But uh, getting back to the hip thrust with barbells rolling across your. Uh, uh, private areas. Uh, <laughs> what a what a pleasant visual. <laughs> just, just so, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's good. We'll we'll go back up to some other questions. Thank you for the great question there. Yes, yes <laughs> my that is. I, I don't. I mean. I will tell you, of all the physical functions, the most important before competition is a bowel movement. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. Okay. Get, get that on a schedule, and, right? And I got, and I know it's going to make people laugh in their cars, but I got to tell you, uh, when I'm talking to my athletes about getting ready for the nationals or the state meet, and the importance of you know waking up early and taking all that metamucil, get that metamucil in. Everybody laughs until they're the person in that hot dry track meet and who hasn't gone number two in two three days yeah and then there you go yeah totally all right uh ricky says hey pat and dan i recently bought fat loss happens on monday and easy strength for fat loss presently on uh day five workouts and eating coffee as dan instructs it's working sorry that wasn't a question that's just a comment that's great that's a good one so thank you ricky that's great glad to see that you've taken dan yeah, and put it if you don't lose this number oh sorry a little steely down there uh but uh yeah, I thank you. Uh, interesting about, you know, it's interesting how simple it can be. But don't forget, you're doing the basics of, you know, caloric restriction, and you're doing the the basics of inefficient exercise. So it is it is literally nothing new under the sun. Uh, uh, Herodot and uh, Herodotus, Hippocrates told us to do the same basic thing, and uh, it's this has been information that's been around for twenty five hundred years plus, and 
Uh, the only thing is I, I kind of trust it a little bit more than most people. So, yeah. Yeah, very, very, very good. Okay, let's take one or two more here, and then we'll hear what else Dan is working on this week. Snoop Kane. Snoop Kane. A boy is here. Snoop Kane. <laughs> All right. Martha Hyper- <laughs> Stewart. Yeah, yeah. Is hypertrophy possible while playing soccer three times a week? My team got prompted this season, and I'm noticing that I got pushed around a lot on the field, and that is limiting my gains. Wants to beef up, wants to be a Hulk on the field. That's interesting. Uh, last week, I was I gave a lecture up at the University of Utah, and uh, their, their very famous basketball player it was in the room. And we got into a side discussion during the lecture about when these these uh, high school kids come into the program, uh, go they go from high school, they're the superstar high school McDonald's all-star kid. But when they go into Division One, the thing they can't handle is the elbows and the physical contact. So Snoop Kane's question, uh, gentle listeners, is it's, it's more common than you think as you move up levels, uh, you you take more and more uh, collisions, and uh, you do so. You know when you're playing soccer three times a week. I'm assuming you're playing soccer matches three times a week. That seems like a lot for a professional, but uh, yeah, you need you need to. Can can you can you can you get bigger, stronger, faster in season? That's always been the tough one. Um, you know, at most elite athletes can train twice a week in season, depending on the sport, um, in something like the national football league, you know, you know, you basically, you hot tub from game to game cause you're just so broken, but yeah, you, you certainly can, uh, as a, as a, as a soccer player, you can probably do a lot more upper body work. Um, of course, the lower body is the engine of hypertrophy, but you, you can only do what you can do. So the answer is yes, but it's going to be, it's not going to be as good as if you could, if you had a few months off to, to, to do it. So yeah, that's good. That. All right. Well, I'll finish with this one. It's a fun question. Uh, Matt says, if you could only have two kettlebells long-term, would you say 250 pounds would be good? Dan, haven't we talked about the 220 kilograms? 20 for me, it's the two, yeah, it's the yeah. 20s. Uh, and, and the reason... Not quite 50 pounds. Yeah, it's a 44. But uh, yeah, I, I like the 20s and, and you know, the 24s or 53s. You're in the ballpark there, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, Matt, that's, that's you're in the numbers. You know, that, 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 that's perfect. There's Yeah, you know, yeah, obviously if you're, you perfect, know, depending you know. on your size and experience level. But man, I love the two, the 220s just are just such a, a, yeah. a money, a money set for just, you can get so much mileage, yeah. out of that, you know? When I, when I pull out the 20s, it, I mean, I, I don't really even need to warm up on them. They're the right load. And if I want to make them harder, I just do more reps, you know? Yeah, it's like a Goldilocks set. Right? Yeah, it's just, yeah. So if the two, you know, like when I do that one hypertrophy where I go with the double presses, the two, three, five, ten, two, three, five, ten. The twenties are too light for the two, three, but it doesn't matter because I'm accumulating fatigue to hit that ten with, and then two, three, five, ten. So it, so you can. And by the way, if all you had was a sixteen, you could certainly get get great work out of it. You, it's it's what's between your ears that's going to hold you. It, it's going to push you forward or hold you back. Yeah. yeah, groovy. Okay, Dan. Before we go, what are you working on this week? You got some travels coming up soon, right? Are we gonna we're we gonna miss you next we'll, week, or what's the? We'll be good next week. It'll be the week after, and then the week after I'll be uh, on. I'll be in a plane during this one. But uh, actually, I got uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, Friday, I'm also flying out to, back to San Francisco. Uh, for my buzz, uh, my cousin Bill Spillane's funeral, a really great man, a Vietnam vet, just a decent man. Uh, he's the one who stood with me at my mom's grave uh, uh, on her on her funeral. Uh, we were the last two standing uh, by her grave. Uh, he also taught me how to throw a knuckleball, and he's a uh, he also he's the one who taught me. Um, uh, he's the one who played Take Five, Dave Brubeck, for me uh, when we were young. We me and the brothers, uh, we were sitting around. He got this new LP called uh, uh, <laughs> LP is not Take Five, but whatever the that LP. And then of course he also liked Bossa Nova, which is still what I like. So yeah, uh, my best to Bill. And, yeah, well, God rest him. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and and good and enjoy the voyage. Um, 
this weekend is also uh, my uh, tomorrow is my daughter Kelly's birthday. So Saturday uh, is in happy home. almost birthday to Kelly. Very cool. And if anyone thinks uh, if anyone has daughters, you know how important those birthdays are. <laughs> we have uh, you know two two of our daughters born on the same day. Dan. Oh, so. that's gonna be a that's gonna be fun. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. Oh yeah, it's always uh, it's always a spectacle. So very good as it should be, right? For the daughters, of course, that's of right. course. And, yeah, yeah, and very very good. Yeah. Yeah. And the boys, you give them a refrigerator box and they're happy for Yeah, them. you just put them out in the snow to do some chores or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> Double standards are, are definitely real. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. We appreciate you, Dan. We appreciate thanks to our boys here. Our man, Snoop Kane, Gorg. Good to see the regulars in the crowd in the mix. Oh, we got Blinko. We got Dale. I, I saw a bunch of names. Yeah, I saw a bunch of names here. Yeah, today. sorry we didn't get through everything, but there's always next week. So bring your questions then with your coffee, and we will see you guys next Tuesday. Same time, same place.